Hello everybody, welcome to today's webinar. You're here because you are part of the first early adopter group for the new KW websites. My name is Brenda Harrelson. I am with the KWRI technology training team and I'm here to tell you what you need to know. I also have Adrian Friedberg here. He will be helping to answer questions and um, chime in as needed. He's the product manager. Uh, also here at KWRI for the new websites. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you have questions, you can go ahead and type them into the questions field and we will answer them as we're able to. The biggest thing you need to know is how to get to your new website to um, start to customize it. So when we go live, which will be this week, you will see a link. You'll log into my KW and on your black menu bar, under the technology menu, you'll see a new link way at the bottom of the list and it will say new KW website dash agent. So you'll click there and then it's going to take you to a login screen that looks like what you see over there on the right side of the screen, right over here. If it's not pre-filled in for you, you'll enter the email address and it's going to be the address that we have on file for you in white pages. It's what you use to enter the early adopter group. And then you'll be receiving an email. Um, it's going to come to you from, let me get that address for you, my new website at kw.com. That email will come to you with a temporary password that you'll use to log in. If you don't have the email, you can always click on the forget password link and it will be sent to you. Um, you'll notice that a red line went through the link at the bottom where it says don't have an account, sign up now. We are recommending you don't click that. Um, it will be there on the screen, but what that's going to do is take you to um, it's going to prompt you to create a brand new account with Playster. It has no connection whatsoever to Keller Williams. You will be billed for that. So just log in um, using the green button and then that's going to take you to your KW site, which as you see has already been created for you. Let's take a look at what you're going to see when you log in. So you're going to get a pop-up window that looks like this, letting you know that your new site has already been created for you. We've got a basic site in place that you can then um, use as is. You'll have to launch it first, or as we recommend, you'll want to customize it to make it match your brand and add all of the custom content that you have in mind. So what you'll probably do next is click the action in step three, and you'll go to the site editor. So bear with me one moment as I bring up what that's going to look like and we'll actually walk through the process of editing your new site. Okay, if you're not seeing my screen, try to refresh your screen or uh, sometimes you might need to restart the webinar if it's seeming to get stuck. But you should now be seeing in just a moment, there's a little bit of a delay, the site details or site editor for your new website. Okay. So this is what you'll see after you click that link. Um, as I said, you've got one link. Okay. And if you're, we're getting questions about it. Um, you're not going to see the new site yet in the technology tab that won't be there until we go live. Okay. So these are your site settings available to you. And one other thing to know, you can get back to your home page to see what your site is by clicking on this KW logo in the upper left corner. So this confirms for you that you have a site, doesn't have a title yet, we'll fill that in. Um, we need to activate the IDX real quick, we'll do that. Posts. There's already four blog posts created for you to help you get started and kind of get an idea of what you can blog about. And over here you can see that your website already has seven pages. So let's see what those look like. You can always click View Details to get back to that site setting screen. And let's quickly take a look at what a basic site looks like. View Preview will open up your site. 
it's reminding us that we haven't launched it, so it's not visible to the public yet. But out of the box, you've got um, this layout with a menu already created for you. This is called an Omnibox search form, so visitors will just type any and all search criteria into this one box and do their search. It's already got a slideshow built for you, and everything that you're seeing can be customized your featured properties. So that's what it looks like out of the box. So let's go back and make some changes to it. So view details or you can also go up here to site settings. Either of those links will take you to your list of site settings. So they're organized into three groups. The settings are listings, site design, and more. So let's go down the list and I'll give you a quick overview of what you can do in each of these areas. It won't go into detail because as you can see, the interface has a lot of um, information over on the right side. Every screen you go to will have some help notes on the right side and it tells you what each of the links will do. So first thing to know is that we have already integrated um, the IDX for you. You just need to make sure that you uh, turn it on. So come to IDX integration, your MLS should have already been selected, just click on use this LS. And now it says selected and we'll say save. And now all listings in your MLS will be shown on your website. Other things that you can do with regard to listings is you can set filters if you choose. So Google filters has three different settings here. Um, one, the default is all listings. So currently in the Austin uh, MLS, there are 15,194 listings. And if I want all of those to show on my website, I'll check this box. Or, going back, I can only show a select group of listings. Maybe I only want to show luxury properties that are over a certain price point. So I can add search criteria such as minimum price, add that, and then fill in what that number would be. Let's just say 500,000. And that's going to narrow down the number of listings that be visible on my site. Or there are uh, specific listings if I only wanted to show, well, specific listings, I could pick and choose those and add them to my filter. Just keep in mind that if you select specific listings, um, as new listings come into the LS that fit your criteria, you'll have to manually add them to that filter. Whereas if you just did filtered listings, that filter will automatically update with new listings as they come on. So I'm going to leave this to show all listings. Then you have your featured listings, and as you remember when we saw the live site, what it will look like, um, these are the featured properties that will show below the slideshow. Um, so again, this works the same way where you can set a filter or you can choose specific listings to be your featured property. So up to you how you want that to work. And this is going to apply to what is on your home page. You're also able to create a featured listings page. So one thing to know about this website, you can add virtually as many pages to it as you want. It's very flexible. So if you wanted to have multiple pages that feature listings and then have a different uh, filter for those, you could do that. And then the last setting under listings um, is open house info. That isn't going to apply to these websites. That is for a single property site, and that is not part of this rollout. Then we get into the design, the look and feel of your site. So let's look at theme selection. So again, your site's already been built for you, and we've given you a, a design that's exclusive Keller Williams agents called the Madison Design. Um, all of these designs are named after cities. So Madison looks like this, and it's the only design that has this Omnibox search form built into it. Um, you can change the color, as you can tell. And then it also gives you the option of choosing a red or white header. And then here is where you could enter a statement. And you can see it in the screenshot. It's right now the statement would be the best place to find your home. That's going to display, kind of being overlaid on your slideshow. You can 
definitely choose a different design if you want to. Just take note that Madison design, again, it's the only one that has Omnibox, and it's the only one that has Keller Williams logo added for you. If you want to change the design to make it fit your brand, let's just say we want to go with Phoenix, for example, and the orange theme. That'll change my options a little bit. Okay, so theme, and again, anytime you make a change, you can quickly see what your changes look like by clicking on View Preview. So they take place instantly. So easy to go back and forth and play around and find the right look and feel or any of these functions. Um, the slideshow. So again, we've done a lot for you, and this is a great starting point to give you some ideas on what your slideshow would entail or what it would include. So uh, the default is already selected for you, or if you wanted to feature interiors or luxury properties, you could. So what we would recommend is selecting uh, one of these slideshows, or you could build your own, but if you select one, you'll notice that you can change the photos. And over here it reminds you that uh, the best results want your images to be these dimensions, one 1,600 pixels wide by 660 tall. So you can uh, upload your own photos to overwrite what's there. You can give each image a caption, and then if you wanted to uh, have a hyperlink to another page, you could add a hyperlink. So when the slideshow is live and rotating through, you could click on any photo and it would take you to maybe the HOA's page, or if you're showing off, um, features in that community, you could take it to that landing page for that activity, it's such as uh, Leander is a town nearby that has a train station. That's something that's a huge problem in Austin is the traffic, so it's that's a great thing to advertise in your area that there's a train station by that will get you to downtown quickly. So you might add a link to um, the Metro Rail website, for example. Okay, certifications. You can add up to six certifications, and these will show at the bottom of your website pages. So you can select from those that are there. So for example, I'll select green and NAR, again, up to six. You'll just click on Save, and then those will get added to the bottom of your page. Social networks. Uh, simply, if you have accounts with any of the social networks, you'll just add your account name um, using an agent as our sample agent. Let's spell that right. Okay, so let's say she wants to add a link to her Facebook page, her Twitter account, and YouTube. Click on Save. And I'll go back in a moment and preview the site so you can see all these changes that we've made, what they look like on the site. Uh, search form. Again, had we gone with that Mattis design, the only search form option would have been that Omni box, the one box. The other designs have different kinds of search forms. So right now, uh, this is what's being used where visitors will choose whether they're looking for a rental or a property for sale, and then they can filter on price and city. Or you could have the starting point be the city, zip code, or neighborhood. So for example, I'll choose neighborhood. And then within that, do I want just a minimum number of search fields or more or even more? So all up to you what you want that to look like. Choose basic, middle of the road. Okay, menu. So we give you um, what's called the, ex there's a basic menu and an expanded menu. So when you launch your site, you've got the expanded menu. But of course, you can change these and add or take away menu items. So this is going across the top of your page, home, listing, search, about, blog, and contact. Those are there for you. Um, one link or one menu item we would absolutely recommend you add would be a custom URL. We're going to add that to the menu and then going to label that get my mobile app. And then you'll put your unique app download page URL here, which begins with KW, and then um, this is a test account, doesn't have one, so just make one up. Um, Tooltip, this is what would be shown as you hover over that link. So I could say, 
search the MLS on the go. And now if I go back to my menu, I've got that there. Um, and maybe I want to move that up a little bit next to my listing search page. Maybe I don't want to call this listing search. I want it to be called find a home. So as you can see, the menu um, is very flexible. So you can change menu labels, reorganize them, remove, or add them. Okay, and last item under site design is your site info. So because we are not using the Madison design, the KW logo is not showing up at the top, so we'll need to manually add that in. You can give your site a title. Again, if I'm focusing on a town called Leander, maybe that's the name of my site. I like the tagline, but you'll probably want to change that. Um, and then upload the logo. This is where you would click and upload the KW logo. And in case you're wondering, where do you find the KW logo? And I just switch over for a moment to my KW. Wait for that to come up. You will find logos and um, anything you need for marketing under the marketing tab, logos and graphics. When that page opens, there's a link here to logos and identity. And then you can choose from any of these logos. Just uh, click web and that's going to download a zip file. You'll open a zip file and then you'll see the JPEGs in there and that's what you'll upload to your site. Um, also notice that you can do a favicon, so that would show up in the tab. And you can add contact details here. So I'll put any agent, and this will brand your site, and this is going to show on virtually every page of the website, I believe. Um, and then the office details for your market center, or uh, whatever you want to have as your office contact information would go there. And then throughout the website, you'll see opportunities to um, add a meta title and meta description for SEO. So that's if you searched for your site and found it on a search results page, the title is what you see in bold and then the meta description below that. All right, so let's look at our site now. Okay, what is a favicon? I will show you a favicon in, so right now um, this will change later, but if you look at the top of my screen, if you look at the tab, that's a favicon, that little icon, that little picture next to the name of the tab is a favicon. So if you have a team logo, that would be a great opportunity to put that on your tab so it really further brands your site. So now you can see I've got a link here to my mobile app. Um, this no longer says listing search. There's the title, my tagline, there's a KW logo. Here's all my social media links. So everything we just did is now reflected on the site. Okay, um, and then quickly some more things that you can do. Lead capture, when you first launch your site, it's going to be set by default to passively capture leads. We would recommend you change that to aggressively capture leads, which means nobody can view any property details without registering, providing their contact information. And just a side note, once they do register, 
you'll be able to see those leads here and in eEdge. So as always, all leads are going to go to your eEdge contact database as all other leads in the KW network do. You can also enter an email address for leads to be forwarded. So um, you're already getting a notification from eEdge, but this is just one more opportunity to be notified when there are new leads. Um, other things that you can do if you've already purchased a custom domain, uh, well, you have to launch it first. You can add that here. Site tracking, if you use Google Analytics, you'll add that ID here. And then site verification is to sometimes required by uh, these social media sites to access added features. Okay. So we've got a little bit more time. I want to quickly show you how you can add content to your site. Once you've got all the settings set the way that you want them, you can add content. And that begins first by adding pages. So again, out of the box, you have seven pages on your website. You can edit any of the ones that are there by clicking on edit. If you want to add more pages, you'll click the plus sign, and then you choose from the page templates. So maybe you have a lot of testimonials that you want to make sure you have on your website, for example. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll click testimonials index, and then I'm going to give it a page title, my raving fans. Right here, make sure it gets added to my menu. Again, all pages have um, an opportunity for you to give it a meta title and meta description. And as always, you've got some help over here on the right side. Um, I have the option of changing the menu label or order. I'll just leave it where it is for right now. And there's that page. Um, notice I already have a blog page. So now these next four links going across, it, these are here so you can add content to pages. So blog posts. These four are here for you. We would highly recommend that you either edit these to make them more unique to your area and your brand, remove, and then you can add your own. But in order for you to have blog posts show on your website, you need to have the blog page added. And then each blog page has a title um, slug or link. There's the content. And then you can add an excerpt. And again, the meta title and meta description. Agents, so another page that you can add is an agent index, and when you have added your agent index, then you can come here and you can add basically a bio page for each agent on your team. So that's where people can learn about um, your, you and your team. Testimonials will go here, so once you create a testimonial page, then you can start adding testimonials to that page, you can give each one a title. Uh, the paragraph goes here, the refer, affiliation, and then whether or not you want that to be featured. You can also add um, images to your testimonials. And then finally, areas. These are your neighborhoods. So one of the pages you can add is an area index. If you have special um, neighborhoods or areas, niche, niche areas that you want to highlight, have that areas page added, and then you can come here and specifically say what those areas are. So you'll give each one a title, and then what type of area is it? Is it a county, locality, neighborhood? Once you select that, then you can go further and identify which neighborhood is it. Again, should that be featured? You can upload 
a slideshow photo, and then here is the page content. So again, you can add all the areas you want to your site. So when we're finished, we would click Launch Site when you have it looking the way that you want. We'll go back to my home page in my admin tool. Let's say that again. And at any time, you can always go back and make more changes to it or disable it. So here um, is a new menu item that I added for my testimonials. I just need to put testimonials on it. So everything that we set is now visible. Okay, so that is in a nutshell how to navigate the site administration tool. So we encourage you, as soon as that link goes live, we're anticipating very soon this week, click on it, log into your account, start building out your site, see what it looks like, and we will be sending out a survey at some point in the near future to all early adopters just to get your feedback on how it's going. And I'm going to show you next where you can go for support as you work through this. And we have been getting some questions, so keep sending those in and we will address those momentarily. Okay, so in just a moment your support options will be showing up. You can email or you can call support. So go ahead and make a note of those contact forms. And I'll bring that back up again if you need me to. Also, we want to let you know that along with the link going live on the MyKW Technology menu bar, you're also going to see, if you notice in the bottom right corner of your MyKW homepage, there's also going to be a quick link um, that says Early Adopter Website. And what that will be is just a real quick recap of how to log in, what to do if you forget your password, um, what are some of the things you need to know as you customize your site, and again, where to go to get support. So I'll leave this screen up there, and we've got a few minutes where we can address some questions. So um, Adrian is here and can help us with those. And if you need to jump off, then we want to thank you for being here, and uh, have fun with your sites. Good luck. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Adrian Freeberg, and I just wanted to address some of the questions that were coming in. Again, we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll be able to address more of these questions through our uh, Frequently Asked Questions page for the Early Adopter website, so if we don't immediately answer them now, they will be addressed uh, later on. So one of the first questions we asked is if we, if uh, early adopters will be able to keep this site after the beta program ends, and that's, uh, yes, you will be able to keep this site. It is, uh, once you launch it and it becomes a live site, uh, it will not change uh, only, and then you will have uh, control of the settings and changing the, the look and feel of that website. Uh, but, but we're not gonna be replacing the website you currently have with another website. This is the website that you will be launching with. Uh, another question was asked about uh, additional forms needed for IDX. Uh, IDX will be set up for you, so you won't be, uh, it'll be all electronic. There's a forms to send, especially for this early adopter group. As we roll out, there may be some forms for other MLSs, but we specifically targeted uh, the easy integration for uh, this first group of uh, early adopters. Um, another question was asked about the Omnibox. So this is, again, a free text search box that's part of the KW exclusive template. And that box uh, will not be available on the other templates. So if you do choose another template, there's five other templates to choose from that are not KW sponsored. You won't be able to take that feature and apply it to those templates. So right now, only your KW exclusive template has that free text search. It's an amazing exclusive search for KW agents and that you type in anything and it will show up suggested searches as well as uh, show uh, listings in real time. And someone else asked about Google Maps, if you can integrate that. So with this website platform, Google Maps is already integrated, so uh, it's, not, it's, part of the, it's part of the package. Uh, another question was about uh, photos, if you can edit photos as part of the template. Absolutely, you'll be able to go into your settings of the, of the dashboard and select the photos that you wish to 
uh, feature on your website. You can create it as a static image or it could be a slideshow. Either preference is up to you, uh, but either way you can uh, change those photos. Um, another person asked about the uh, domain name. So you can have a custom domain name and point it to this website. It is CNAME Cable. So uh, whatever, if you have your own personal uh, domain, you can point it to this new site. Again, you have to launch it. It becomes a live site, and then you can point it. And so if anyone enters in your personal URL, they'll be able to see this new KW website. I'm just going to ask, uh, I'm going to answer a couple other questions. Uh, someone asked about SEO. So this platform is built with SEO in mind. Again, the structure and the architecture of the platform uh, makes it easy for Google to search and call. So you will be uh, inherent a platform is the ability to easily, for, for people to easily find your website on any of the search platforms. So again, there are some specific things you can add to your blog postings and your pages that make it a little easier to find, but out of the box, it's already uh, built in with SEO. Again, we encourage the keeping your, your website to date with additional content and blogs. That way, your quality score will be very high, and when someone's searching for terms that are located throughout your website, yours will be one of the first to come up. And uh, again, the leads uh, that you get from your website will come into eEdge. So that is something that even for this first round of early adopters, you will have your leads come in through eEdge. And I believe we'll, at, we'll ask one more question here about... Um, We'll ask one more question about neighborhood data. So when you create a neighborhood site, uh, the listings in that neighborhood actually uh, are updated in real time. So you don't have to go and, and, and place specific listings for that neighborhood. You create the page and it finds an area that for that neighborhood where the listings are active and so those will show up on your website. So once you set up that neighborhood page, uh, the listings will be automatically updated. So, I guess uh, that's, that's it for now. Keep Yes, we'll stay on for about one more minute. If you have questions that we didn't answer, we, we have received really hundreds, so uh, we will definitely download them. And as Adrian said, we'll put together an FAQ resource that will be available from the uh, page. Again, notice down on the bottom right, your, your friend is going to be that link in the quick links box. That early adopter website link will take you to a landing page. Um, you'll have a link on that page to this webinar after we have the recording processed and any FAQs we have answers to and we'll just keep that updated as we are getting questions. So that'll be your early adopter page where you go for all your information and for the latest on this rollout. So thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you uh, being an early adopter and we're excited to hear from you and again look out for surveys that will coming to provide your feedback and we will talk with you again soon. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.